Hello, my name is Chad Cassum from Acoustic Sounds, Analog Productions, and Quality Record Pressings. Today is a very exciting day. We're going to talk about the great Acoustic Sounds Contemporary Series that we've been working with Concord on and Kraft Records. And this has been going back to, I think, 2015 when we first started talking to them about this series. We went to Bernie Grunman's, and uh, since Bernie Grunman, his first job when he arrived in L.A. was working for Les Koenig from Contemporary, and he cut all of those, so many masters for Contemporary, he worked there for a good long time. It's like, hey, there was no other choice but to use Bernie Grunman. We're also really good friends with John Koenig, who was Lester Koenig's son. So we've been working with the Contemporary label since 1992 when I reissued the first analog production jazz album and that was uh, Sonny Rollins Way Out West. So we're really familiar with uh, the Sun, you know, the contemporary label. Like I said, 92 we did Sonny Rollins Way Out West and Art Pepper Meets the Rhythm Section which pretty much is their two best albums probably or their two most famous albums. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people have others that they like as, as well. I mean, I know I do, but we sell the most of the Sonny Rollins Way Out West and the Art Pepper Meets the Rhythm. So, again, I first reissued those two from Ralph Kaffel back in 1992, and, uh, and then in 2015 I was going to do a series with Contemporary. I was going to do 25, and later a time went on, and then... Uh, Concord uh, Craft wanted to do their own series and they hired me to oversee it and do just like the Acoustic Sounds Verve series, we're doing the Acoustic Sounds Contemporary series. And uh, so this is shipping now. Art Pepper meets the rhythm section. It's one of the best ones. It's Miles Davis rhythm section with Art Pepper killer sounding record very accessible music you know just just such a good album uh i love 1010 deo is uh, one of my favorite songs on here but everything on here is really really good and now this was supposed to be the first contemporary in the series and then ended up being like maybe the sixth or so and i'll get into the reasons why it didn't come out as the first one it be interesting to explain that but I'll tell that story at the end anyway uh, we're gonna go through the release dates of the next year so 2023 is what we're gonna go through on the release of the contemporaries the acoustic sounds contemporary series 2023 so this one's shipping now probably the best one we've sold a ton already it's going well, so. The next one is Andre Previn, West Side Story. Another great record, that's May 19th. It's uh, Andre Previn on piano, Shelly Man on drums, and Red Mitchell on bass. Another great, famous, great sounding album. It was uh, recorded by Roy Dunan in 1959. May 19th. This one's great. Leroy Vinegar Sextet. Leroy Walks. 616. So this is the original stereo label and uh, another great title. Victor Feldman on Vibes. Teddy Edwards on tenor sax. Gerald Wilson on trumpet. Another great title, the Leroy Vinegar Sextet, Leroy Walks. Okay, next, 714, is Ornette Coleman, Something Else? 714, it was his first record, and also his first record on Contemporary. So, you know, he ended up becoming famous, so to be able to have the label that was able to introduce Ornette Coleman to the world is, is pretty, pretty good, it was a pretty good get for Contemporary. And then the next one is 811, Arnett Coleman, Tomorrow is the Question. 
Then Shelley Man and his friends, My Fair Lady, 915. This was recorded in 1956 in stereo, which is amazing. Roy Dunan, the engineer. Most, hardly anybody was recording stereo in 1956, so they were way ahead of their time. Shelley Man and his friends, My Fair Lady, 915. This one's killer. 1013, the Curtis Counts Group. You get more bounce with Curtis Counts. Awesome album. Another Roy Dunan title. Portrait of Art Farmer, 1110. Another killer album, Portraits of Art Farmer. Got Hank Jones on piano, Roy Haynes on drums. Phineas Newborn Jr., a world of piano, 1215. So again, that's what's coming out in 2023 on the contemporary label. So we're very excited about it. We're already starting to get the test pressings on the next titles, listening to them, really, really enjoying these records. And the series is just going so good, just like the Verve series. They're both, uh, people love them. They're sounding good and they're selling well. Which brings me to something, uh, you know, talking about the Art Pepper meets the Rhythm section. I'm just going to go through a little history of why that particular record was, um, was supposed to be the first one and ended up being the sixth one. They wanted a, us to press a mono pressing of Art Pepper meets the Rhythm section for Record Store Day. Now, it was a, the Acoustic Sounds Contemporary series but for Record Store Day, we weren't able to get any, so we pressed the record, we fulfilled the order, and then the first title was going to be Art Pepper Meets the Rhythm Section Stereo for the Acoustic Sounds Contemporary Series. When we got the cover for it, we looked at it, and we're like, wow, this doesn't look right. I pulled out my original, and sure enough, the new jacket, it was cropped, it was blown up, and it was yellow, yellowish tint. So we're like, wow, this, this ain't right. This don't look good. You know, and they hired me to oversee this series. And the reason they hired me to oversee this series is to make the highest quality records that I know how to make. So again, I was to pick the titles, pick the mastering, do the pressing, and oversee the whole thing. So it's like, man, the first title in the jacket doesn't look right. So we called them and they said, hey, scrap the jackets, just scrap them. You know, now the only problem with that is it, we're going to have to put it way down the list of releases, which was kind of disappointing because it was a new series and we wanted the hot Art Pepper Meets the Rhythm to come out right away. But, you know, this is, you just got to do the best you can. So we couldn't use those jackets and we just put it like, six down, you know, like the sixth title to come out. So we just went through the rest of them and then we got a better jacket and now we released it yesterday. But we, at the time, just thought the jacket didn't look right, you know, because it didn't. But now I'm realizing really what happened was the cover for the stereo, they used the image from the mono jacket that they had just released and then they just turned it into a stereo record and so I was comparing the mono cover to the stereo cover basically and it didn't look the same. Well now what I really realize is that original mono cover, that's how the original mono cover looked. It was different than the way the stereo cover looked. So I just thought it didn't look right. It didn't look good. And, uh, and I compared it to the stereo. So again, I told them, hey, I don't think this is right. To their credit, they threw away all those expensive jackets and did it right. It's the, the covers are very expensive and they take a long time to make, but they had us trash them and they did it right. And now we just released it. The other thing that's different about it is the mono had color on the back, 
but the stereo, the original stereo, didn't have color on the back. But again, we're, we're just trying to make the best cover that we possibly can. And they took the original mono cover to make the, the reissue mono cover, and they did a good job. And they took the original stereo cover and made the reissue stereo cover, and they did a good job. It's not quite perfect. You know, you'll see that the original we think is a little bit better, but, it, but the reissue is very, very close. And, you know, we've reissued this record in 92 as a 33 by Doug Sachs Mastering. We reissued in about 2002 as a 45 with Kevin Gray Mastering. And they have the OJC. So we have all of those covers to compare. And we really think they did a great job on the new reissue. Again, the original, I think, is a little bit better. But you got to compare the stereo to the stereo cover and the mono to the mono. Now, you know, you may say, well, well, which do you like it? I personally like the stereo one better because uh, the mono one, it's too yellow. But other people feel differently. You know, uh, I, I, it, it's hard for me to understand. Maybe they think the the mono was the original and anything different is, isn't as good as what the mono looked like. But, but the mono is the mono, the stereo is the stereo, and that's what we did. And we think we did a great job on it. So today was a very successful day. We sent out the Exodus. We sent out 3,300 boxes yesterday, which I think is our record. So everybody that has the Exodus, by the time they see this video, they'll probably have them. And they'll probably also have the Art Pepper Meets the Rhythm section. And, um, and I think they're going to love it, man. We appreciate the support. We're really excited about the up and coming contemporary series. And we think it's going to be great. And we're going to be doing them consistently and hopefully for years to come. And again, we appreciate your support of Acoustic Sounds. And we just keep reinvesting that money into trying to make the highest quality products we can and license more and more great titles that we think you all want. And, uh, and again, this is a great series, and uh, thank you so much for supporting it. Please like and subscribe for more audiophile content. I woke up this morning, my baby was gone.